Chamaka's first day in office yesterday, U.S. Ambassador-designate to South Africa, Lana Marx, addressed media for the first time, saying she was pleased to be at home, of course, in reference to her being a South African-born American. The United States is South Africa's third largest trading partner, with two-way trade in 2018 valued at $13.7 billion, uh, or over 200 billion, 203 billion rand. And she says that she's determined to move that up to number one. We're inviting our viewers to join us in this conversation with her at the agenda underscore SABC uh, during this time of election preparation, trade, territory wrangling, economic uncertainty and impeachment talks in the U.S. Ambassador-designate, welcome to the agenda. Welcome to South Africa. Thank you very much, Desiree, for your very warm welcome. And it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you here today and to your viewers. Interesting time uh, to be uh, a senior diplomat in South Africa. You just heard we're talking about water shortages. What are your priorities as you come into this job? Um, my priorities as the senior diplomat in South Africa of the United States is trade and investment. It is a fantastic time with President Ramaphosa in place and President Trump in place. Both of them are incredible businessmen and we want to greatly increase our trade with South Africa. Also, we have given a tremendous surge in funds for PEPFAR and we want to try and work very diligently towards epidemic control. Um, just this year alone, uh, I'm very proud to say that Congress have allocated 752 million US dollars to work together with South Africa towards epidemic control. And I will look to see that these funds are utilized in the most effective way. We are on an upward uh, trajectory, but we need to move even quicker on that upward trajectory. And that is um, a goal of mine. Also, in terms of jobs for youth and yep. women's empowerment, that is tremendously important to me with my involvement uh, with the Harvard Women's Leadership Board and many other avenues that I've been involved in. That is uh, a pet uh, desire of mine to really get more involved in that arena. We have many agencies here in South Africa and we want to increase them in that arena very, very much so. So I personally see this as a very, very exciting time to be here and to be on the ground in South Africa. You're speaking about that upward movement and most South Africans really are not feeling it because there's a, a, a joblessness pinch right now in the country. Yes. How do you hope to contribute to yes. that effort? Well, very fortunately with our current administration, President Trump, we've created a much reduction of unemployment in the United States and a fantastic, fantastic economy back home. And we hope to help in any way possible we can by creating more jobs through more investment, more business in South Africa. And a fantastic example of what has just happened is with Ford Motor Company creating 6,700 more jobs in South Africa just announced last week with the new plant and indirectly with the motor supply chain could indirectly affect as many as 70,000 new jobs in South Africa. And we want to really focus tremendously on working together and help wherever possible to create as many jobs, to create as many programs with training, with trades. Oh my gosh, I could go on and on. But I'm very enthusiastic about this. I'm a conduit from Pretoria mm -hmm. to Washington in all arenas, very positively. There's a bit of suspicion uh, most of the time around Republicans. You were talking about PEPFA earlier and uh, the project that was launched by a Republican president. What are you going to do to bring around the South African public in terms of perception of Republicans? Um, I'm going to show by example. All I'm going to do is work to increase our already magnificent, robust relationship together, increase our trade, increase our investment in South Africa, increase jobs in South Africa, increase training, and to show by action. Action speaks louder than words. For quite a while, we didn't have uh, an ambassador from the U.S. We were starting to think, it's not going to happen. Is your appointment an indication that perhaps uh, President Trump is interested in Africa and perhaps could we see a state visit? Um, I would like nothing more than the President to visit South Africa. 
when I became his candidate just after the election in November 2016, he said to me how beautiful Cape Town was and he was most anxious for me to get to South Africa as soon as possible. Um, we do have a very rigorous vetting process uh, to become an ambassador. It took a while. <laughs> oh my gosh, two and a half years. And I think part of that was the fact that I visited uh, with my business 110 countries in the last 15 years. So I was looked into in all of these countries, all my activities, everything like that. And I highly respect the process. But now that I'm here, I really look forward to learning a lot, to meeting folks, yep. to learning on the ground. I welcome all and every idea and I look forward to really being out and about and interacting with local South Africans to help me in this ongoing fantastic relationship that I hope to increase and make even more robust. Tell us a bit about your South African heritage. Um, I was born and raised in South Africa in an Eastern Cape city called East London. Most folks, when you say Eastern Cape, say Port Elizabeth, I say no, East London. Um, it was a wonderful life. I uh, played sport. I did ballet. I went to Sterling Primary School. I went to Clarendon High School. Then I came up to Johannesburg and went to university at Wits University. I was very fortunate to play sport. I believe sport is tremendously important um, as a child growing up. We so up to your young adult life. Yes. Yes, I played sport, I played a lot of tennis. I was fortunate with my tennis because I visited a lot of towns and cities all around South Africa playing in all the junior tournaments. And now I have the knowledge of those towns. So this diplomat life started a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it did indeed in the sports arena. And I must congratulate you at this incredible, incredible feat in the rugby with South Africa. And look how South Africa it's shines on the world stage. Oh my gosh, yeah. we were so excited. So let's talk about the, the, the current story right now. Yes. The whole world, including uh, the U.S. public, along with the U.S. public, was glued to our TV screens mm -hmm. last night for uh, the first day of those public hearings uh, uh, that uh, President Trump calls a witch hunt. What yes. are your initial impressions mm -hmm. uh, of the Ambassador Bill Taylor and George Kemp's testimony? Well, let me go back a bit, because for two years we had intense scrutiny, intense investigation through our democratic process of a prior investigation. Two years, ins and outs, ins and outs, huge amount of investigation, huge amount of money spent, and in the end, there was nothing. So here we have another situation uh, at the start of an investigation, very fortunately, like South Africa, we have a very democratic process and, you know, we're just at the start of this next investigation. There is a fantastic democratic process in place and me as ambassador, I'm going to focus on my goals, which are increasing trade, increasing investment, accountability with PEPFAR and HIV and creating jobs and youth and women's empowerment. We can't keep away uh, from the social issues, though, uh, that a democratic process you're talking about can be quite costly sometimes. Uh, two sides coming out thinking they're victorious last night, uh, the, uh, 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 the Republican side feeling that uh, Congress didn't bring sufficient information uh, to, to have a strong case. How can we see this unfolding? You know, this is a work in progress. Again, let me say it's a democratic process. It's just going to have to take its course. It is a democracy, so if there's anything, uh, it'll come out. And if there's nothing, again, it'll also come out. You, you're talking about your emphasis on the economy. One of the big economic stories, especially in relation to South Africa and the U.S., was that poultry dumping story. Uh, does it give you sleepless nights, stories like that? How, how, are you, how do you hope to... Uh, uh, to face those challenges. And Desiree, it doesn't at this stage. Look, there's many problems across the board which I hope that in any way we as the United States can help in any way we're here willing to able with anything. The AGOA is in place. It is a tremendous uh, tr a trade um, mechanism for South Africa and for Africa, but particularly for South Africa. And there are criteria for AGOA which were agreed upon with our previous ambassador and with the prior administration. And one of those was poultry. All I can say from my perspective, it's working well at the moment. It is. There is a, um, the quota is being reached. It's in excess of the quota. 
um, America's exporting poultry here is, is going really well at the moment. Yes, you always get noise, you always get rumblings. That's normal in business, that's normal in trade. But from my perspective, all mm. I can report is things are going well. What brief did you get on AGOA? There were times when it seemed like President uh, Trump wanted to scrap it. Um, AGOA comes to an end in 2025. So there's going to have to be something after AGOA you know, if it comes to an end in 2025. From President Trump and the administration's perspective, together with South Africa, trade with South Africa is incredibly important to this administration. Um, as you will notice by all the folks from the United States who were here during the African Investment Forum, and I actually put forward my trip so that I could attend this outstanding forum. And um, I saw images of you there, and I thought she's hitting the ground running. What are your thoughts about yes. uh, what uh, that uh, platform uh, thought, seeks to achieve? I thought it was exceptional. The second year increasing dramatically. We had many senior folks here uh, in terms of trade and investment from the U.S. government. It's incredibly positive. This is the second year. It's increasing dramatically. Uh, I was so happy to hear President Ramaphosa's address. It was very statesmanlike. It was outstanding. And we're ready to go. We're ready. I am ready to Are you the ready for running. a robust engagement yes. of South Africans, yes. though, yes. who yes. have a bone to pick most of the time? Uh, with <laughs> Don't the pick any bone. Actually, you can pick it with me personally, but I'm very good at dealing with things head on, yeah. resolving it. We have an incredible opportunity now to move forward positively with trade, with our robust engagement. And honestly, again, I see it very positive. Um, I, before I came to South Africa, I spent three weeks in Washington engaging with every department of government from the highest level, with President Trump at the White House, every department of government. And without exception, I had positive feedback. What can we do to increase our robust engagement with South Africa? How do we increase trade? I'm here for you, Lana. You tell me what we can do together. We're all here. We're rearing to go. Let's become number one. Uh, you told we have a tweet that's just come through in relation to our conversation. Uh -huh. they are saying, Wamkeleki, oh wow, this welcoming you to the country. Wamkeleki, I want to walk the journey with you. Please accept my request applica application uh, and thank you at the end. Okay, yes. well, okay. Enkosi is a word You I come know. from the Eastern Cape, yeah. you would know what Enkosi so, means. Uh, may I say Enkosi by return, thank you so much, yes. Oh wow, um, okay. That's lovely. We are going to walk the walk. Talk the talk is not our language. Yeah. We're going to walk the walk. That's why I'm here on behalf of President Trump, on behalf of this administration, on behalf of the U.S. government, the State Department, everyone. And that's why I brought my trip forward to attend the African Investment Forum and to hit the ground running together action. We spoke about the public hearings as one of the current issues. Another one is the killing of al Baghdadi. Um, it's been reported there are some, that there are some cells that exist here in South Africa in terms of the movement he represents. How do you hope to deal with those issues? If there's any way in which we in the U.S. can increase our assistance together with South Africa, already many of our government departments are working so closely together. It's so heartening and so wonderful to see this collaboration and cooperation. And if there's any way South Africa wants us to assist in any way possible, we are here ready to assist in any way possible. We're terrific partners already, and we're here to increase any partnership South Africa wishes of us. Okay, let's, uh, there's another tweet that has come through. Let's look at that. Nazim Khrudbom saying, why are they not lifting the sanctions against Zimbabwe? Okay, so we in the United Thanks, States... Thanks, Nazim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very topical question. We in the United States have a very robust democracy, South Africa has a very robust democracy. These sanctions have been long-standing, though. And they're South really affecting Africa the people of Zimbabwe. It's an incredible role model for Zimbabwe. Case closed. Really? Yes. The people of Zimbabwe are suffering. South Africa is an incredible role model of democracy, of all aspects of democracy, and an incredible role model yeah. to Zimbabwe. One of the big global conversations and thank right you for now the question. Yes. is the trade wars, especially 
uh, the US and China and the impact on all of their diplomatic partners. Uh, one moment it seems like a deal will be signed and then it isn't. What is happening there? And um, all I can say about that is President Trump has looked at these deals and it's really important to him that these deals are fair in compared to trade, in response to trade, in relative to trade. And he's looked at these deals over many, many years. He's looked at how industries have been impacted in the United States. Just one industry alone, production, manufacturing. Look at South Africa with its production and manufacturing. I even remember when I was here as a child, yes. the robust, incredible manufacturing industry of South Africa. So Most analysts would argue, though, that fair is not the word because he keeps talking about America first. And that's, a, that's problematic language, especially when it comes to South Africa. we at the BRICS summit right now. Even there, uh, we wanting to assert our presence in that meeting as equals. Yes. Thank you so much for raising that important point. In America, President Trump believes in America first, just as in South Africa, it needs to be South Africa first. And that's how we look at that. So in South Africa, it needs to be South Where's Africa first. Where's the middle first. ground? The middle ground is in our trade together and fair trade together. And if you look at trade deals, for example, our model is very different than other countries. In our model, we invest. We invest in South Africa. We invest in business. Perhaps you know, with other countries, they do, they do things differently. Is there a so, level of flexibility to that model? Um, I think that's ideal, as we met with some of your folks recently, and they said the Ford uh, deal is perfection for South Africa, the Ford um, motor company with the increased business now. But with any deals that South Africa does, please can South Africa and Africa watch very, very carefully that there's no debt reliance, that they scrutinize every deal, they mm. scrutinize every deal, and they protect their sovereign assets. And that's why I've highlighted that we in the United States have a different model. We invest money in South Africa, we invest in health programs, we invest in energy in Africa with electricity, we have programs to empower the youth to create jobs, women's empowerment. You know, there are so many programs that even I didn't know that I've been alerted to recently, yes. which I hope to highlight in the coming months and visit on site, and then we hope to increase those even more. So on a practical level, yes. what needs to happen for the U.S.-China deal to happen? Um, I think it just needs to be fair. There are criteria that President Trump has given to President Xi, and they need to have a melding of minds. President Trump is firm. He's a very, very loyal business partner. And perhaps people don't know that. When he gives his word on something, his word is his word. So he's given certain criteria. You can't agree on certain criteria and then back down. No. If President Trump gives his word on something and the U.S. gives their word on something, the other side gives their word on something, it needs to stick. It needs to stay. And I feel this is the best way they will get to a close meeting of minds. Let's talk about the election process in the U.S. that's currently underway. Is the Seemingly, Elizabeth Warren is, is in the forefront. Is America uh, ready for a woman president? America is ready for whoever wins at the ballot box in our democratic process. And if it's a man, if it's a woman, that's of no significance. They must go out and campaign effectively. It's a very rigorous year of campaigning. And then may the best man or woman win. The very story we were talking about earlier about uh, the public hearings is in relation to Ukraine and uh, the supposed activities that the president engaged in in that regard and sentiment that he was doing that to improve his re-election prospects. Uh, are the Republicans feeling confident? And again, we have a very democratic process. You can see the enormous support that President Trump has uh, by the Republicans and if they didn't feel confident, I don't think he would harness that support. Let's talk about uh, the project. You've spoken about PEPFA. Uh, we've spoken about AGOA. The kind of projects you want to be seen uh, to be highlighting during your time here. Yes. Um, well, again, 
I do want to increase trade tremendously. I'm going to be out and about. I want feedback. Uh, we have specific sectors that we'd like to increase. We feel we can increase. We have all the ingredients now to increase it. And again, so please, any ideas, any errors from the highest level of South Africa all the way, please bring me your ideas. Bring our mission your ideas on how we can increase uh, investment in South Africa and increase trade with South Africa. That's number one. Um, we're here to listen. We're here to learn. And we want to move at warp speed. We want to move very quickly in this arena while we have this incredible opportunity together. And then with PEPFAR, we've just brought in a terrific new specialist uh, for PEPFAR uh, in our mission. Um, we have its wide outreach. Uh, we have, you know, many government organizations involved. It's working really well with the South African government, and we'll be looking at the effectiveness of all the dollars. We want to increase the effectiveness. I've spoken to all the folks in Washington. I've spoken to all the folks at USAID. I spent an extensive amount of time in Atlanta with CDC, with all the folks there also involved. It's extraordinary. The program is extraordinary. Partnership with South Africa is extraordinary, and we want to get to um, epidemic control as quickly as possible. So I'm going to be a little bit of a taskmaster, really, to increase um, results in this arena. I just want to look at this tweet, but when I return, I want to ask you about your thoughts about uh, the mooted NHI system in South Africa in terms of health. But Umlung is saying, how committed is the U.S. in the development of Africa? Oh my gosh, the U.S. is very committed, and this administration is very committed in the development of Africa. We've got this new program, Prosper Africa, we've got OPIC. There are so many new programs which could lead and will lead to billions and billions of dollars of aid to Africa. Africa is terribly important to the United States, particularly, you know, the youth of Africa, um, look at what we're doing with electricity, look at what we're doing with energy in all arena. And you were with me now on the ground in South Africa, which is um, terribly important as one of the largest trading partners of, uh, for Africa, if not the largest trading partner uh, of Africa with the United States. Everything is just going to increase exponentially now. And of course, terribly, to Africa is very important to the United States. You were saying that besides uh, economic growth, you're also looking at uh, focusing on health, and South Africa is busy working on implementing the national health insurance. What are the prospects uh, for that kind of system? Um, tremendous prospects. Again, I've only been on the ground three days. It feels like three days. Your country also grapples with the issues of uh, a rolling out of, of health systems. We have changes in our health care systems in the United States. Um, and it's all moving now positively in a positive direction. And I think it can also move very positively here in a positive direction uh, together. If we can help in any way possible, there are things, there are things in the works at the moment. And whatever way we can work to assist, we're, we're thrilled and willing and able. Let's talk about youth and women. Uh, you have some thoughts there. Yes. Um, unfortunately, unemployment is a problem in South Africa at the moment, and we really want to do whatever we can to address this, to assist this. The youth in South Africa are tremendously important. They're the next generation. We want to assist in any way possible to create empowerment of youth, training of youth, jobs for youth, and in particular, women, all aspects of women's empowerment. It's, it's, those two are so close to my heart, and I think you'll, you'll see some action on those fronts in the coming months on the United States with South Africa. Please watch. <laughs> and finally, that perennial question, uh, what's in it for the U.S.? What's in it for the U.S.? Um, South Africa is the anchor of Africa, and it's in a tremendously important continent. South Africa offers so much and the U.S. offers so much. We have so many similarities. We have a great robust relationship. We have many issues and many manners. We can help each other together as a partnership and I look forward to increasing that already robust relationship. 
Ambassador Designate Shalana Marx, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us this morning. Thank Welcome you. once again to South Africa. Thank you so much, Desiree. I really appreciate this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. Let's uh, take a look at, uh, is it the weather or a break? All right. Let's